Wow, it has been the hottest of minutes since I've picked up this camera. I think the last time that I filmed anything or even really touched this camera was August of 2021 and it is currently May of 2022. So it's been a minute, but I am really excited because Lovis has challenged me and I am not one to back away from a challenge, she said aggressively. Lovis has challenged me to be an outliner for once and stick with it and not give up and actually see how it goes and give it a fair chance. Meanwhile, she is off trying discovery writing or pantsing or whatever you want to call it. I like discovery writing. Um, I think it's probably Probably my favorite description of what I do and how I write only because it doesn't sound so reckless like pantsing. She's trying discovery writing. I'm gonna give outlining a real go and we're gonna see how it turns out. Today is day one. A lot of you might be familiar with my dystopian project that I started and then never really picked up. I had other projects kind of come into the fold and that one took a back burner, but I'm really excited about it. And every time I go back to read the stuff that I've written, I love it. I love the concept. I love everything about it, but I've run into one main snag and that is it's a dystopian <laughs> full it is a dystopian, but I want the message of the story to pack a punch. I really want the why to be very clear, and in order to do that, I have to plan, I have to outline, I have to have a direction. And right now, with the way that I write discovery writing, it doesn't necessarily allow for that right out of the gate. I definitely see where the story takes me and that could mean I end up writing a completely different story than what I set out to do. It's worked for me so far, but it won't work for this project and it won't work for this story that I'm really excited to tell. So, outlining it is. But I think I can come up with my own kind of outline that works for me, that makes sense to me. And really, that's what Lovis has challenged me to do. So we're gonna give it a go. Oh my god, so many, so many things are popping up. Uh, there's a few things that I'm contending with um, in this story. The first is that there is a time jump. <laughs> there's a timeline difference, there's a time jump. Something with time is going on. My character is small at one point and then she grows up and I have to have both of those parts in the story and it makes sense but I don't want to reveal things from her childhood right off the bat so I'm thinking a dual timeline situation but I don't think I have enough content for the first timeline to really stretch the length of the book and then of course you want that first timeline to kind of die out so that way the present timeline packs more of a punch. <sighs> you see why I need to outline this story? Like it has never been more important than now for me to actually have a plan for this beast. And not to mention, but I foresee this being quite a hefty book, a hefty project. So uh, that's a whole other thing. Methods that I've tried before. Mm. I've tried the three act nine block 27 chapter method. I thought that was fine for a pretty clear-cut story. I think this, what I'm aiming for, is way too much going on to try and fit everything in their little boxes. I have tried Save the Cat again. I think it's just, it's the beats. I, it's just not what I'm going for. <laughs> this is already a mess. What I'm getting at is that I've tried different outlining methods and I feel that what I'm aiming for for this story, I just don't think any of them will aid me in the way that I think outlines aid Lovis or aid other writers. So what I'm going to do is I'm just trying to get a plan all in writing. I'm going to have it all in order. So theoretically, I should be able to sit down and know what comes next. I know that doesn't sound that crazy uh, for people who generally use outlines, but as a discovery writer, I rely really heavily on 
just kind of going for it to see where I'm headed next. So the idea of having to think this far ahead is a little staggering at first, and I think I'm a little bit overwhelmed, but I believe that I'm capable of coming up with some kind of method to make it work for this story and for me. That was pretty hopeful. I hope that I mean that. <laughs> So I have pulled up the Scrivener that I have started for this project and I don't know if you guys remember but I spent some time working on this project in particular for one of the nanos. It must have been a camp. The April camp maybe? Of last year. So it's been a minute since I've like really looked through some of uh, the work that I did back then, but the fact that A, I'm a discovery writer and B, I worked in this project for Nano is a bad, bad sign because that means that I was really just going for it and trying to reach a word count and not necessarily leaning into the authenticity of the story because I was so focused on um, winning Camp Nano, which is fair. I first am going to do a read through of everything that I have so far. My dystopian is set pretty far into the future and I'm already seeing dates that I already figured out and I'm like, thank God that I'm not total chaos. Past the dates, I don't have much else. So I'm just going to kind of get everything organized and then, oh Lord, how am I even going to go about this? Maybe I just need one page that's a bit of a timeline. Yikes. I think I'm going to have to call Lovis. Is this where I use a phone a friend? I can't use my phone a friend on the first day that I sit down to do this. Oh no. Maybe I'll phone a different friend <laughs> that outlines and see what I can do. Let's see who's up. Leah? What if I just sent Leah a message and said, SOS, how do you outline? <laughs> I think I'm going to. <laughs> I am struggling a little bit with just the balance of having a full-time job, full-time career, and also trying to write and trying to find the capacity to be creative. Um, and I have always really struggled with work draining everything that I have. So it's been a bit of a tricky balance, but I'm trying. I think the last thing that you saw from me was a frantic message sent to Leah Rummel. Her initial response was, LOL, are you attempting one with the crying laughing emoji? So if that doesn't speak to just how much of a discovery writer I am through and through, then I don't know what does. But she gave me some really helpful advice, which I will paraphrase for you, but she basically always starts with kind of marking out the internal arc and then letting that inspire the external arc. So I really like that advice um, because it's not telling me like, here's how you structure an outline. It's like, Here's some ideas for you. It could be different for every story. I really liked that advice. So Leah, thank you for answering my frantic messages. <laughs> she did say, and this reassured me so much. So Leah, seriously, thank you. She said, my outlining is very vibes based. So it's really me just trying different things and asking if it feels right in the story. I love that advice. I love that advice. I feel like I can kind of draw from that and make that work for this story, especially since it's a dystopian, so of course it's about the world, but it's really how my main character moves through the world and the role that she plays and how ultimately she and maybe a band of others, I don't know, are going to change the world. So I'm really liking where she was going with this. She did give me a bit of an example, which was really helpful. She's a gem. Lovis did ask me while we were checking in with each other, have you chosen a plotting method yet? And I obviously have not, but I do think that following some kind of timeline would be extremely helpful for me, especially since there are going to be moments where I'm revealing a bit of the character's backstory and knowing exactly where that's going to fall in the story and knowing when to reveal, that's just going to make a, a world of difference for me. On top of that, it also kind of works with what Leo was saying with finding that internal arc and then that informing the external arc. I think I can kind of make it all work in my own little mismosh weird outline thing. 
Lois did mention a program called Milanote that she believes has some kind of a timeline template. So what I'm gonna do is see what that's all about and see if I can maybe get the beginnings of a timeline going. This is as close as we're gonna get to an outline. I firmly believe that in my heart. Okay, so this website is pretty cool. I just created a board and named it Dystopia USA. It seems like we've got a lot of different like free floating options right now, which is so cool. I'm kind of obsessed with this. It feels a little bit more creative based than something like Notion, which I do use. Now you're ready to add some content. Well, story of my life. I'm really liking how freeform this is. I obviously still have to like play around a little bit more, but I'm just, I don't know. Overall, like, I kind of like it. <coughs> Excuse me. Whoa, you can add some fun things. <gasps> oh my god, you can add a color. You can add a to-do. And you can really just like drag these wherever you want. Okay, wow. So they've got quite a few templates that are for writing, which is amazing. I'm even seeing the three-act structure. Holy moly wow okay so this really lets you like plot out a lot of different things what's novel plan <gasps> oh my gosh no freaking way um this is maybe the coolest thing ever oh my gosh story outline oh <gasps> wow wait <laughs> did lovis just save my entire life brainstorming <gasps> what a mood board a place for all your research character <gasps> what this is the coolest thing I've ever seen it's hilarious because I'm not seeing any kind of like timeline type thing but I could easily create my own timeline using this story outline it's so basic, but really intuitive. Is this becoming an ad for Milanote? <laughs> Hi, we are joined by a wild Danica and a wild Ace out here in Los Angeles. They came to visit me and also to help me plot my novel. <laughs> that is the, that is the, the whole purpose of our The only reason. Kate needs help. Kate needs assistance And I will be there. All of my friends have been extremely helpful with this whole process of trying outlining for the first time. <laughs> Ma'am, can you know? You want the emergency that you're having. Jamming out. We're filming in LA. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, all of my friends have been extremely, extremely helpful with um, this whole process of plotting novel and they've all kind of given me their tips and the way that they do things and so I am now cherry picking from everyone else's um, way of doing things and creating my own system. I'm going to have Ace explain her way of plotting things because she's just going to do a better job um, <laughs> of mapping it out than I ever could. So essentially what you're doing is you're really just following bullet points of things you absolutely know have to happen and that's what you're plotting out. And so um, for instance like if there's a major argument between two of your characters that you know you want to happen and like where that's going to be all of your drafting is leading to that point and so you're following bullet points rather than very detailed outline um you know breakdowns because those can kind of trap you and when you get stuck and you're not following that then you get stuck and you don't want to be there anymore um and that kind of stops you from writing so having a more loose more vague writing template and outline um, lets you be creative and lets you kind of draft and like discover as you're writing what you still have a goal end point of where you want to be. So I follow my plot outline which is usually the hero's journey and then I bullet point within that and then those bullet points can move around if they need to. So if I've gone through the first act and I didn't hit one of those bullet points, was it detrimental to my story and I have to go back and fix it or can it move to another part of my story? Um, and that's essentially how I outline with just the like major key bullet points of like what needs to get done and then I kind of, you know, draft the rest. And it's flexible. It's very flexible. It's flexible and I think that's 
that's something that I I'm like trying to show you that I have clothes on um, I, I swear I think the flexibility of it all is something that is really important to me because the second that I feel like I'm locked in or tied down to a certain structure or timeline or anything um, that's when I feel like I'm losing all creativity and the story and a lot of times it just doesn't feel like it flows as nicely because I'm trying so hard to get from point A to point B but when you can just pick that up and move it somewhere else I like that I have gotten to about the midway point of my story in terms of outlining I've reached act two I guess I don't know that feels way too structured for me to really say with confidence but I've reached what you would call the midway point and my gut instinct is to stop like I need to stop because there's so much that I like could write in the beginning and I feel like that's going to inform so much of what happens so for the second half of the book I may do some extremely loose checkpoints of like this needs to happen this needs to happen and this needs to happen and that's all the outlining that I do for the second half of the book do we feel like that's like a good plan or I don't really know does that even count at that point so the reason you're thinking you need to stop is because you think you're gonna come up with something better essentially for the ending? Potentially. The second half? Like I know, I know like two or three main plot points that need to happen no matter what. But everything else I feel like could be really informed by like what I write yeah. in the first half that I've outlined already. Yeah. And that I've got plotted. So well, for the sake of the outlining exercise, I wonder a little if it's worth throwing some general, very general ideas for the second half. Yeah. Like a couple bullet points or just very more? Points, like ace yeah. and five, like a couple bullet points. Yeah. Nothing exciting. Nothing nothing that will tear you down too much. But yeah. Just like, and then there'll be a battle here. And then it's not like, right. like it's not at all. And then it ends. I remember you had some interesting ideas for the ending. I Just do. jot those down. Yeah. For the sake of the outlining exercise. As more of a brainstorm and less of a like, yeah. this is gonna go here and this is gonna go here. It can become more and more general, certainly. Okay. But I think that might... <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. That feels so weird to have the entire first half like completely plotted, but maybe that's what I need to do. Like maybe that's yeah. like how it works because it's like I still have some structure but I'm not like confined to what I've planned ahead of time. And that way, you know, as you're writing the first half and you're brainstorming like the final battle, for example, which I know is probably not relevant for your book, but you know, you're like, as you're writing the second, you're like, oh, well maybe in that like general battle I wanna do, maybe I can bring this thing back up or that thing as you're coming up with it. But since yeah. you know you wanna end with the final battle, it will help maybe. Right. Just right. the broad, you know, end goal. Right. My brain is melting. I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so I feel also like this is so much time that I'm devoting to to not writing. Like mm. I could have the time that I've spent thinking and like getting all of this organized, I could have been putting actual words in a draft. Mm -hmm. You know? Like I don't know how to turn that part of my brain off. Yeah. I wish I had more of that part of the brain. You, I'm need, the you need more of that. <laughs> I'm like, let's organize. We need more folders. You know yeah. what I think we need is just more organization. <laughs> I'm done know. with this outline crap. Lovis, I know you're watching this. Um, you're maybe even reacting to this. This is the only time that I am ever going to outline in my life. I can feel it. Can't wait to see you like glow up and in like three years, you'd be like, I am entirely an ally. <laughs> God, like, never, I never. You're gonna I, look back. I'll never vlog. betray my roots. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hello. It has been a few days since I checked in. My house guests have left, and I am so sad about it. But they were extremely helpful with this whole outlining endeavor. I think it's important to note here that all of my writer friends are outliners they are all plotters so i am kind of a lone wolf when it comes to discovery writing but this is working in my favor because i have so many people in my life that i can go to and say 
how do you outline? Um, like how I messaged Leah. Lovis has also been so helpful um, answering all of my questions and she's been asking me questions too. So it's both of us just messaging each other back and forth saying, how's it going? How's it going? But I will say, when my friends were in town, they helped me a lot and I actually sat down and figured out most of my timeline in that afternoon that you just watched. So I kind of wanted to walk you through what I've done. If some of you who are like diehard plotters are hearing me say, I finished my outline in one afternoon and you have like sirens going off, like how did she finish an entire outline in one afternoon? Basically, there is no way that I was going to sit down and have a really in-depth beat by beat outline of this entire novel. It simply wasn't gonna work. I had done that with my first nano project back in 2022 you can go see those videos I gave up on that project I spent all of October of 2020 prepping and outlining this book and then on day two of nano I decided to scrap it all and switch projects because I had done too much prep and there is such a thing as too much prep I firmly believe that I sat down to write the story and it wasn't fun anymore and I knew exactly where it was headed and I felt Felt like there wasn't any room to discover um, different plot lines or maybe new characters which I think is the beauty of discovery writing is you just never know what's around the corner and what I've been telling Lovis you know I keep saying go with your gut you know just like keep pushing forward and I felt like with that story that I outlined I wouldn't have any opportunities for that and maybe I would have maybe that's just you know my own journey in which case I'd love to hear how you guys approach um, having an outline and then starting to actually draft because um, to me those are two different things all this to say that I finished my outline in one afternoon because it is an incredibly loose outline it is not very structured it's structured in the sense that I know what's coming when but there is a certain point in the outline where I have just started doing bullet points and I don't know when those bullet points will appear in the draft I don't know if they will appear in the draft but I have them and that's the huge thing so let me just let me just kind of show you what I've done here Ooh, should I screen record this maybe no because it's like spoilers galore I can't really do that maybe I'll give examples so in terms of this timeline I started kind of with three lines of what I want to be involved in the prologue I know I'm a going to have a prologue because it serves the story really well and B I know what needs to be in the prologue so I kind of just one two three listed out there not even full sentences um, character making her choice a glimpse at insert world here um, and then introduce X plot point like I'm 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 paraphrasing so I don't give away <laughs> all of the things that I have come up with thus far but you get the gist it is very very loose and very simple the background and the inciting incident could be all tied into one chapter it could be tied into one scene I don't know I don't know yet that I get to figure out when I start drafting so I think I've come up with if you're if you're following me thus far which if you are god bless this is an outline that is still going to serve my discovery writer self I'm still gonna be able to explore the story I'm still gonna get to see where it goes because everything that I've written down in this outline is extremely flexible and like what ace was saying I can pick and choose and move and cut and paste scenes all over the place they're not locked in by chapter one chapter two in this outline I also wrote down things like what I want the big plot twist to be I wrote down kind of what I want the um, simmering conflict to be I wrote down the words what's next a million times because when I didn't know where to go I would just say what's next and then I would kind of put down in what I think should come after said event 
I feel good about this. I feel good about this so far. And then what happened is I got to a point where I was like, I have outlined about two thirds of this story, yet I don't know what I want the ending to be. It could go in a ton of different directions and I'm just not sure. So from there, I really leaned into the bullet points and the whole last third, final third of the book is really up in the air. It's really up in the air. And the cool part is, is I've jotted down so many ideas at this point that I should be able to kind of just pick and choose which ideas flow with the story that I've drafted thus far. I write literally, literally, <laughs> yikes. I write linear. Um, I don't know if that is common for people. It's what I've always done. Any time that I try to jump ahead, I always find I'm creating more work for myself with trying to like merge the stories as opposed to just writing uh, linearly. <laughs> that means that I can write and draft everything that I have uh, outlined thus far and then hopefully the last third could be discovery writing. And I think, moral of the story, I think what this is all boiling down to is that I think writing, you guys are gonna be like, wow, this is such a groundbreaking thought, Kate, thank you so much. But I think the beauty of writing is that you can grab a hold of all of these techniques and ways of doing it and combine it to make your own perfect um, rhythm. There's a lot of people in this world who are true plotters and they will have every beat of their story figured out before they ever start drafting. There are people on the other side of the spectrum who don't like to have any kind of plan whatsoever. They know maybe a beginning and maybe a middle and they just go for it, which is generally me. But I think there's probably the majority of people that have this kind of happy medium way of approaching writing where they outline a little bit, they discovery write a little bit. And I think that's maybe something that I could try exploring a little bit more. This outline that I created was really just a experiment. It was a challenge from Lovis and I challenged her in return and it was really fun. But I think what the both of us are realizing is that there's a way to meld all of these techniques together to create your perfect writing style. And um, maybe there's not, and this is all bullshit. <laughs> In which case, this was a super fun video. I cannot believe I actually attempted an outline again. I really swore that I would never do that. Um, and look at me now. I, I plotted pretty much this whole book. It doesn't look like much, but I plotted this whole book. Do I start drafting now? Mm -hmm.